folks. So we're doing something different today. My friend Doug has a new telescope for his home observatory, and it's a $12,000 scope. Now, normally when you hear of a price tag like that, um, you would think of a big mirror telescope. But this is actually an Explorer Scientific Refractor Telescope um, with a big objective lens. So he got it a couple months ago, and I haven't seen it yet. So I'm going to go over there and check it out now and, and bring you guys with me. So, And uh, oh, if you don't know who Doug is, he, he has a big presence on Facebook. Um, he's been in Astronomy Magazine and Sky and Telescope so many times that I've lost count. So, okay, uh, let's go to his place. How's it going? Good, Chuck. How you doing? All right. Can I come in here? Yeah, come on in. All right. It's a little warm with the roof closed. That's all right. A little bit dark. Yeah. Oh, happen. no, I can see fine. I, I, I turned the light on, so hopefully it helps. That's all right. So what are you doing? doing? I got these turnbuckles here to open it up. Oh, okay. I don't know if you remember a couple of years ago, we had an 80 mile an hour storm. Oh, yeah. And it actually held up pretty well. No I was, kidding. I was surprised. I thought it was going to Sweet. Help. You don't want to watch your head? Oh, yeah. All right. That is cool. Let me, uh, put the... Oh, yeah, let's check this out. So you can come over here. <laughs> Side. All right. So, wow. Yeah, that's the. Oh, you, you really keep it clean, too. I try. I actually I just cleaned it the other day. Oh, really? It's been so clear. I haven't been closing up, though, so I get a lot of dust in here. Right. But this, it's, it's funny because the size of this dew shield is about the size of an 8 inch SCT. Right. Because, you know, the, while that's six and a half inches, <clears throat> this thing is nine inches. No kidding. Yeah. Now, what you told me about this scope, though, kind of surprised me. It actually is shorter than your old 150? Yeah. It's actually a few inches shorter. Wow. So, when I close up, it's actually a few inches further from the door. No kidding. <clears throat> and, uh, so, it has a little bit less focal length, obviously, then, too, right? Yeah. So, it's about 50 millimeters less. So, instead of 12, 16 millimeters uh -huh. on the 152, it is 11 56 I want to say no kidding it's not it's uh not that big of a difference so the 152 was 0 0.064 arc seconds per pixel uh-huh this one is 0 0.068 arc seconds per pixel no so kidding. it's a 0 0.04 arc second difference which is not a really big difference wow. but it's f7 instead of f8 right oh f7 it's even faster yeah oh, nice that's even faster than my 127 I'm f75 mm -hmm. and wow. I have better glass too so instead of the uh what do they call it, the FCD one? You got the super duper duper glass. Yeah, it's the. Uh, I got the middle glass, and you got the highest end glass, right? Yeah, it's the FPL fifty three. Okay, I think I've got yeah. the FCD one hundred. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Nice. So it's a pretty good scope. Um, you know, when I first got it, I was doing a lot of broadband, mm -hmm. and I was still having some problems with uh, um, red and blue. Uh huh. It was bloating quite a bit. Uh huh. The, the full width half mass was a lot higher than the green. Right. Just like with my FCD1. And I was trying to figure out why. I don't think it's so much the glass. I think it's because of our horrible skies we, we have here near Detroit. Ah, uh, yeah. And then, um, so I switched to astronomic deep sky RGB filters, which have more of a cutoff in the red and the blue. Right. Um, on the two ends, you okay. know, near infrared and near ultraviolet. And what happens is that it puts the full width half mass more in line with all of each other along with the green right so my stars before since the red and the blue were bloating it was causing magenta stars red ah. and blue make you know magenta. right uh, but with this it's been it's been really good so it wasn't so much the lens as it was the filters right so are okay. you happy with this upgrade yeah so far i've been very happy with it okay it looks like a beast i wonder if i could even run this on my how heavy is it 
It's not that bad. I think it's 20 something pounds. Oh, I could easily run that off of my CGX then. Yeah, the major problem is how long these are. Oh. Yeah. I forgot about that because the CGX legs, tripod legs, are spread out. It's, so. the, it's the legs, and of course, you get increased momentum with length as well. Definitely, that pier helps out quite a bit. <laughs> yeah, and this pier, when I I had a Steve Rose, is a he's a metalsmith. Uh -huh. uh, I designed the pier, and he built it for me. Okay. It was a few hundred bucks, and then he had power coated. But it's hollow inside, and I had him put a plug in the top. I filled it with sand. Uh huh. So there's no har harmonic problems. Yeah. So you hear there's no ding. Right. And that's important because that could also contribute to bad guiding as well. Okay. Especially if you were to walk around in here, which I don't. So that's what you do with this other scope. I see you've got the tripod legs all the way uh, extended. I had to in this situation. Normally they suggest not extending them out. Yeah. The shorter it is, the better usually your guiding is. But in order to clear these five foot walls, right. I had to do that. Okay. You but, never have a, a you got a nice safe distance between these two? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So both of these can run in almost any direction without a problem. Right. I thought about getting a bigger telescope. Uh huh. Like maybe a Stellar View 127, 130, something like that for my second rig. I'm just afraid that it's going to be, you know, I'm going to start running into problems. Right. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to part these into the, the home, home position. Okay, so you got each rig running on a separate laptop, eh? Yep. And then you control it with TeamViewer inside the house. Correct. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. And there's a, a, there's a network node right here by uh, Linksys. Oh, okay. So it's, it's a three node network. Gotcha. So there's two of these inside the house too. Oh, nice. So it extends the range and it increases the speed of file transfer and controlling. Oh, okay. Yeah, which is really, really nice. Excellent. They come down in price. Originally they were around $500 for three nodes. Ah. I, I think that you can get them for like a couple hundred bucks now for all, oh, three, okay. all three of them. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. I was thinking about getting those before I started using those 20 meter USB lines. Yeah. I, I still have you really hooked me up on this thing. <laughs> Right, you want to lick the lens. <laughs> the the really bad thing about the astrophysics mount is if you run into a collision, uh, it doesn't stop like most mounts do, where it detects it detects uh, an obstruction. Uh huh. It wants to keep going. Right. So <clears throat> when I did all the electrical, if you want to come around over here, I ran what's called a rig runner. Oh. And this is a monitor 12 volt connection process with separate fuses for each connection. Uh huh. So on this particular scope on the mount, I have a five amp fuse. Okay. So if it hits an obstruction, it just blows the fuse. Right. But most scopes, uh -huh. even Chinese scopes like Celestra or whatever, they have an obstruction detection and they'll stop. Right. For some reason, the Mach 1 doesn't have that. Right. I don't know if the new Mach 2 from Astrophysics has it or not. So, and I have that for each one. So on here, the main rig, it's kind of permanent. On this one over here, I have everything on the board with the rig runner. Right. So I could take this up north if I wanted to. Oh, I would, nice. I, I would just disconnect everything and then um, take the board with me. Okay. Yeah. So Doug, you want to tell me about this observatory a bit? So yeah, um, about was that three years ago, maybe? Um, I kind of combed the internet for things I liked in the slide off roof. Um, there were certain things I liked from different people, so we kind of combined it together and did some drawings, which I think you're going to include in the video. And I hired a contractor, I didn't feel like doing it myself. Sure. Because I want to make sure it was built right. <laughs> <laughs> if, if I did it myself, I probably would have came out good. But um, anyway, so I wanted, what I wanted was low walls instead of high walls. So these are five foot walls. So that way I didn't have to raise my stuff up any higher than it had to be. Especially when I run my second rig here on a normal tripod. Um, and then because of that, I made the, the roof itself higher so I could stand in it when it's closed. Right. So I just had to duck my head in it. Okay. And, and you made the concrete floor. That's the first thing you did, obviously, huh? Yeah. So, you know, we did the concrete. I think it was, uh, 
in December when it was still warm outside, and I was actually imaging on the concrete before. Oh, you were. The observatory built. Oh. Yeah. So uh, this is eight foot by ten foot. Um, if I were to do it again, I think I would do it probably ten foot by fourteen foot. Oh, really? That way, I can stick a third rig in here. A third rig? <laughs> You're insane. Yeah. I know. <laughs> but no, it, it's fine for now. Sure. Um, and then the whole thing works on these these rails here. So there's these rails, there's uh, brass um, wheels on the top of the roof. Oh, okay. And then uh, when you close it up, there's these turnbuckles here. You just lock the turnbuckles down. And it does really well with the wind. Right. Know? Yeah. Cool. Like I was talking about before, we had that 80 mile an hour storm a couple of years ago and didn't move at all. Now, what if you're imaging and it's about say 15 uh, the, the wind is 15 mph that roof is not going to roll back on you is it the there's a stop so you see this little metal bracket right here yeah there's one on the back too oh okay it keeps it from wheeling on we can go back there and look oh at yeah it. let's see <clears throat> um this is something i bought over at menards it's just where i keep extra cases oh okay stuff like that i don't sure. keep any important equipment in there right but like empty cases and stuff like that oh, that's nice to have i remember when you were going to do that yeah so back here, um, I'm just framing for it to wheel back here. Um, these two by, these are actually four by sixes, I think. Uh huh. They have a, a cement slab so they don't, they right. don't sink. They're three feet down, so it doesn't rise or lower with the, the front right. line. Uh, and then there's a little stop over here. It keeps the wheels from moving. Oh, okay, gotcha. And if you were to come up in here, whoa, <coughs> there's three wheels on each side. Right. And if I want to, I could actually lock this down to here too. I could put these on here. But I never, oh, I never. You never had to do that. I, I was doing it at first to begin with. But if I, the weather is that bad, you know we shouldn't even be imaging. <laughs> right. Yeah. So right. I, I never bothered doing that. Right. Yeah. All right, man. I think we're gonna wrap this up. Cool. All right. Thanks, everybody. I'll see you later. Thanks, Doug. Take care. All right. See you later, man. Hello folks, so we're doing something different today. I am doing something different today. Hello folks, so we're doing, yeah, something. Hello folks, so we're doing something different today. I am going some, somewhere, somewhere. Hello folks, so we're doing something different today. Hello folks, so we're doing something different today. I need a script, that's what I need. It's a $12,000 scope. Yeah, yeah, big price. And I haven't seen it, I've been wanting to go over there, but you know how things are with the, 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 the. Hello folks, so we're doing something different today. My friend Doug, has a new scope. It's a $12,000 scope.